Hello and welcome to Three Skulls Tavern. Apologies for the laughter. This is uh, take two because we'd, we've done about seven minutes of this of this video already before we realized I wasn't recording. Um, so we're going to quickly <laughs> rattle through everything again. Um, I'm Matt. I'm your host. If you've not um, been to this channel before, um, welcome, first of all. And uh, the really big thing about this channel is that um, I try to play through the games by Free League publishing and um the the show the channel really is about teaching the rules as we go so we don't try and um hide the rules within the narrative or anything like that we will stop the game uh to talk about them if if um if they come up so um yeah that said um this is mutant year zero this is what we're going to be playing for this new campaign um I love Mutant Year Zero. It was uh, what introduced me to Free League back in 2015, um, and I've been a fan ever since. So um, I haven't played it in a quite a long time. So this is this is kind of returning back to my Free League roots. So I'm quite excited. Playing again with Ed, who is um, a good friend of mine, and who you, if you've watched the channel before, you'll have seen him on many of the campaigns. He's been the GM for our Alien campaign and our first Twilight 2000 campaign, and um, yeah, I'll stop talking there. Um, this is going to be um, kind of going out every two weeks. So if you're not watching this at some point in the future when the whole thing is out for you to binge on, um, yeah, every um, two weeks there'll be a new episode coming out. So that out of the way, I will turn over to to Ed. Yes, Before we do um, the rest of our introductions, of course. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> Take two. This is gonna be a lot quicker and a lot smoother. Yeah. <laughs> um, so much like Matt, um, Mutant Zero was the first of the Year Zero engines that I got, um, of the Zero games that I got, and so it does hold a sort of special place for me as well. Um, it's been a long time since I've run it or I played it, so this would be quite nice to to get back to it. Um, you've seen me in the various other things, so I'll turn you over to the other players that we've got. Um, I think um, Chris was next. Um, and I've played with Chris before in Alien. Um, so Chris, I'll just pass over to you. Um, yeah, hi, I'm, I'm Chris, and uh, I've not played Mutant before, but I've not met a, a free league game that I didn't like, um, <laughs> and I know it's awesome, and Matt's super nice, and, uh, well, Paul certainly seems very nice. <laughs> so, You're gonna uh, find I out. You're gonna find out. Awesome <laughs> things, and I can't wait to, uh, uh, see the post-apocalypse with you. Cool. Um, Paul? Uh, I'm just pleased that it can be a disappointment to another person now. <laughs> as a, oh. As a, um, yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Paul. Uh, I'm really glad cause that we're doing take two because I said hello to myself the last time. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I'm and there was your cared. opportunity to just, you know, let that slide. To, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's not an in joke uh, unless you tell it. Is it? Um, uh, yeah, never played um, many free league games. Um, although I do have Alien, and I spent a uh, uh, fortune on Vazen. Is it Vazen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the new one. The new one. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I just sort of, I just, yeah, I, I, I was overcome by uh, fear of missing out on that one. Um, so yeah. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it, so thank you. Cool. And um, yeah, I think this is worth just pointing out as well that because Chris and Paul don't have any um, experience of this game itself, um, it will be, there will be a lot of um, explaining the rules as we go. So um, it's not just, it's not just kind of um, lip service that we're going to, we're going to talk through the rules and then not actually do it. Um, we will be slowing things down. So yeah. Um, there, there is actually just to quickly mention there is a podcast of um, for this channel um, and everything that is all of the actual play content will be going onto the podcast so if you prefer to listen to these um, things audibly while you're commuting or doing your chores or whatever um, that's fine the issue is though that they will be um, a couple of months after the public broadcast the video broadcast However, if you support me on Patreon, <laughs> um, <laughs> the audio will be available within a, within a couple of days of the public broadcast. So I'm trying to grow my Patreon um, my Patreon campaign, and that's one of the things I'm I'm kind of putting the time and effort into is to is to keep the the audio podcast going. So um, yeah, 
that out of the way back to you ed to i guess get the get, get the campaign started yeah the session zero so stuff. uh so yeah so we we've really kind of done a sort of like a mini se session zero outside of this session um we all kind of create everyone created characters everyone created some npcs um so that we've got a sort of ready-made group of people that we can kind of call on um everyone has kind of so one of the decisions we made it was that everyone would be able to take an extra talent um and that's just from the general talent pool so because there's only three players just in case something goes horrendously wrong they've got that little bit of extra talent to kind of get themselves out of trouble we hope um, <laughs> or not depending um so yeah so we kind of thought about that um and and really we we had a bit of a brief discussion around um sort of like some boundaries that we that we're going to set which we kind of discuss again just to kind of um allow you guys to see how we do that um so really we, we just start we started talking about uh, and if you've seen any of our other uh, actual plays we will kind of discuss this in most of them um it's pretty much just about how far we can go what what could we do um at what at what point are we not comfortable discussing a specific subject um and so some games have x cards we've just made a decision that we kind of get up and, and walk away and then we can refresh and carry on a different scene at that point so hopefully i'll be wise enough to realize that um you know matt's run out of the room screaming because whatever i've said has triggered him so uh um, in that case we can stop go on to something else um and we will have that discussion already so i mean for me yeah. i just want to ask you all i'm guessing it's going to be the usual but you never know um, is there anything that you particularly wouldn't want to kind of go down the route of um I guess I'll, I'll I mean, start with you, Matt. For me, as a kind of channel-specific thing for all the campaigns, mm -hmm. uh, there won't be uh, any sexual violence. There won't mm -hmm. be any violence towards kids. Um, and that's kind of the big taboos for the channel. Um, it's worth mentioning as a content warning, without trying to give too much away spoiler-wise, um, that this game does feature slavery and bondage um, and not in a kind of kinky way but basically like it if people are uncomfortable with that it's worth knowing that that might come up in the game there are some adventure sites that deal with it quite explicitly um, so I, those are some things to be aware of but like in terms of taboos those are the kind of the two big ones um, yeah and I don't have any other major ones myself to, to pull out Chris? No, I'm good. Okay, that was easy. Paul? Yeah, covered. They're the things that uh, I can do without. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I will uh, remember not to add any of those in. It's not like I'd slip into that and go, whoops, I accidentally did that, <clears> so that's fine. Um, yeah, so it, because it's a post block world, and it's not a particularly nice place, there's a lot of other stuff that will go on. But um, what I kind of figure we're all kind of growing up. If you feel that it's going in that direction, just let me know and we can kind of pull away at a different thing things can happen off screen and it'll be fine um so that was pretty much around about that um we haven't really discussed much around the way the arc would work so in this game um it's kind of two separate games if anyone's ever played mutant Year zero um one is around the set characters that each uh, that everyone's created and the second one is around about the thing called the Ark, which is basically where everyone lives and all the inhabitants are. Um, as players, you get to stop playing your character and you can sort of like start making decisions on, on this little settlement or whatever it is that you might want it to be. Um, and we haven't discussed that for a particular reason, which is part of the plot line. Um, so we'll discuss that as we go on through the um, through the sessions. But that's pretty much not what I'm planning to do for this session. So. Uh, my general my general idea is to go through the meta plot that's in the main book um, and get as far as we can go in the number of sessions that we can potentially have and then we'll potentially break and then do a second season if that's something that we end up doing um, taking things further but we'll see what we can do um, I'm hoping that I don't want to kind of waffle on too much to start with so we can get straight in on the action um, and start the game going is there any questions from either of you, or either of you, three of you? <laughs> I'm um, so incredibly excited to meet the Ark. <laughs> because, you know, like, um, 
how how um, in Alien we did the um, the world building together, and now you said that you had something prepared for us. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, yeah, I I can't wait to find out where we live. <laughs> I guess this is something to point out is we're doing things slightly differently to how you would normally run the game. Um, Ed and I had a chat about this at the beginning. This is actually my preferred way to run this game. Um, and as a result, not, none of us, other than Ed, know which map we're going to be playing on. Um, which makes it a bit nicer with having, you know, exploring the map. We don't, you know... We, it, it, there's, there's a bit of a there's a bit of a kind of meta issue I find where you you starting in an arc somewhere on a map but you don't know your surrounding area. It always seems a bit a bit strange, like a bit of a, a bit of a weird one. So um, this kind of handles that. But um, I'll let Ed, Ed say a bit more. I'm I'm quite excited about the to see how like to be on the player the player end of this. Ooh, okay. Um, Paul, anything from you? No, I'm just preparing to go. Um, Excellent. Uh, but people will have to forgive me uh, for the um, having the, my ham-fistedness of using push buttons on a on a foundry or uh, <laughs> as well. Yeah, we'll walk There'll you through it. We'll walk you through it. Don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> yeah, yep, that's fine. You know, it'll be a mini foundry tutorial for anyone else who's watching as well. Um, so. Um, I'll just get jump straight into it. So just as a, a bit of a background for you all, um, hopefully you've all sort of read the blurb in the book or the PDF or whatever version of thing you have. The answer is yes. Of course <laughs> I have it. Um, for those who don't know anything about Mutant New Zero, um, it's a post-apocalyptic game. Something has happened um, in the future, near future, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, through apocalypse, world destruction, cataclysmic event, whatever it is, um, world has pretty much gone to shit. Um, <laughs> and um, we have, I guess for intense purposes, for points of reference, a mix of <sighs> Mad Max, I Am Legend, Fallout. Uh, yeah, Fallout, um, a whole, yeah, a whole load of those sorts of things that will be kind of jumbled together. Um, the story centers around our players who are from the Ark. Um, and the Ark is, as far as you're all aware, um, a place that you've grown up. Um, you all don't really know, but you kind of figure you're sort of late teens, early adults ish. It's difficult to tell. Um, you probably did at some point start counting seasons, but when the seasons didn't really change for sort of like a number of quote in quote years it's difficult to tell how old you all are um and the oldest of you can vaguely recall arriving somewhere or, or, or basically being lost in the in, in in the zone as they call it which is everything outside of the arc um and there was this kind gently old man who or young man at the time who kind of took you in found you whatever your kind of like story is, and that's all you've ever known all your life. Um, and you grew up with essentially um, this, this, this adult and a bunch of kids, and you have all kind of grown up together. Um, and that's all you've known, you know, everything's been provided to you by the elder, you don't even know his name. Um, and he has, all, has he always provided for you, he's given you security, he's given you food. Um, when you were old enough, he taught you how to kind of build shelters and to kind of put things together. Um, and, and that's actually been quite good because you you have spent the majority of your time in the Ark. The Ark, which is this lovely um, three-centered building. Um, it's on two floors. It, in the basement, there's really lovely kind of like um, storage rooms full of food and there's like you, you all learned to kind of till the soil outside and so there was lovely little patches of food and there was a, a large sort of lake behind you there was this amazing set of trees that you played in as kids um and it was wonderful and eventually as you were getting older it kind of fell into a little bit of disrepair but there was still enough for you to do um and so you kind of grew up in this relatively idyllic kind of place um as you got old enough you all kind of went out into the zone where you were and sort of like brought back 
probably not from very far, things from the past, which the elder kind of taught some of you to kind of look after and, and, and taught certain of you what some of those things were for. But they're all very, not taboo, but just kind of wasn't really spoken about. Um, and eventually some of your brothers and sisters um, became basically keepers of this law. Um, and it kind of all got shut away. The elder never really kind of spoke to you about it. Some of you kind of figured it was probably because that sort of stuff is what's caused the end of the world from before. So you didn't want to kind of get into too attached. Some of you really, really liked it. Some of you didn't really care. Um, and so eventually in this very nice place, um, you started kind of like, as is always the way with kids and then kids who grow up, they have their own little cliques. Um, and the people that kind of ran these cliques end up being called bosses. Um, and so you ended up with a, a group of factions. They all kind of got on. Everyone kind of listened to the elder um, and everything was fine. And everything was great. Um, and so growing up in this arc, I'm going to ask Paul. <laughs> in fact, yes, Paul, we'll start with you. Uh, we'll throw you in the deep end. Okay. Could you please describe your character? Uh, just in a just in a couple of minutes, just who you are, what you look like, what you do, anything special about you, anything like that. I'm uh, I'm playing Dara. Uh, he's uh, the first thing you'll notice about him is he's got a huge sheepskin coat that he's dragged out of the wreckage at some point. Um, he wears that regardless of uh, the temperature. Um, as such, he's, he also is worried about sweating and smelling, so he tries to bathe as, as much as possible too. Um, but he has four arms, and that's mainly why he's wearing a huge sheepskin. Um, he got pushed into the more physical aspects because they just thought, you know, he's, he's got two more arms than everyone else seemingly so he had to lift more work more fight more um and he just he realized that if he didn't object if he didn't fight back life was just easier so he doesn't mind being told what to do however he knows that there's right things and there's wrong things and at some point he just wants to be on the right side of the decisions so that's mm -hmm. that's him Brilliant. um chris yeah um i'll be playing gia and she's um i don't know she she feels a bit confined by the uh by the the, the constant hustle and bustle of the arc. She she enjoys um, being on her own quite a bit. So it was natural that as soon as she was old enough, she'd start venturing out into the zone and uh, learn to be what is called a stalker. Um, so essentially somebody who, you know, g goes outside and figures out what's there and um, uh, learns to, uh, you know, not die the second they uh, get, get out of sight from home, um, not, you know, be eaten by whatever might be out there or poisoned by whatever might be out there, and uh, sometimes finds nice things and brings them back home. Um, and um, so, so that's that's her uh, that's her thing, you know. Not, uh, the the fighting and the diplomacy between the factions that's just all really tiring and she'd like to stay out of that as much as she can um realizing that that's not always an option um sh she'll just make, make break for it every now and then just yeah, get out in, in into the zone and uh go go for a breather kind of <laughs> amazing thank you very much chris uh and matt yeah, um, I'm playing Silas, and Silas is um, 
what was one of the Dawn Guard, the group of chroniclers who looked after the Dawn Vault, which is um, effectively where all of the artifacts are found out in the zone are kept. And yeah, I've been fascinated by these artifacts of the old world as for as long as I can remember. And um, yeah, there, due to some political things that have happened, um, one of the bosses has sort of taken the chroniclers under his wing, and um, this this boss I don't really trust very much, and it's led me to kind of um, well, it's, it's led me to leave the Dawn Guard, um, so the group of that group of chroniclers who keep watch over the Dawn Vault, and I'm now kind of doing my own thing. I'm going out into the trying to go out into the zone as often as possible to to find artifacts. And, um, I mean, really at the start of this campaign, I don't start with any artifacts. So I kind of, I guess for whatever reason, well, the reasons are probably going to be, um, shown soon. Um, I don't have any artifacts with me right now, but it's, I'm very interested in obtaining artifacts and I'm very interested in those artifacts being used for the betterment of the arc. I'm not looking for them for personal gain, although I might, I might use them for some personal reasons. Um, temporarily really what I'm like I'm really really interested in the arc becoming a kind of bastion of of learning and because I think that's how we're gonna survive by learning from the past by growing as a people and the way only way we can do that is if we can try and learn from from the past right so I don't trust I don't trust a lot of people in the arc. Um, I've got massive trust issues, um, but I'm a chronicler in case that wasn't quite clear. Being one of the one of the um, Dawn Guard originally, and um, my mutation is that I'm a reptilian, um, so I've got kind of scaly skin and mesmerizing eyes, um, and that's I guess more or less what I kind of want to go into with with my character. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else. Yeah, I mean, I've I've got. I wouldn't say I've got aspirations to become a boss, but um, we'll see how that goes with roleplay once we start the game. Um, but I'm I'm I don't see any of the current bosses as being suitable for, um, you know, what the arc needs. So um, it may be that I need to step in myself to to do that. We'll see. Yes, thank you very much, Matt. Um, so, um, you've, you've been at this arc for a very, very long time. Um, I'm going to ask someone to, to roll a dice for me. How about that? Well, we'll start off this just for, just for fun. If someone could roll me, um, a D6. In Foundry? So, in Foundry, yeah, if you could. Um, Shall I do it? Yeah, you go for it. Um, I don't think so I think I'll just do the. Do it. Um, I can just do forward slash R D six. I think, yep. and that'll do it. That's it. Two. Two. Brilliant. Um, okay, so um, pretty much um, things are great. Everything is wonderful. Um, you've all been getting on for however long you've been getting on for, um, and. Probably one one spring morning, sort of like winter's come and gone, the worst of it's gone. Thankfully, you've all been able to hunker down. Um, you could really go out into the zone because it's been sort of like very snowy, very cold. Uh, so the one thing you do know about the place is that in summer, it gets quite hot and quite humid. In winter, it snows quite heavily and get very large drifts. So you've got this sort of like swing uh, of, of, a, of a very hot summer, very cold winter. Um, and winter's come and gone, the snows have all melted. Um, you've all started to kind of get into the spring way of doing things, you know, pl new planting, new seeds, all your kind of um, uh, supplies, sort of like your big cans and stuff have, have slowly over the years been sort of dwindling down. And the more and more you've been kind of um, adding to that. Um, with your own larders and sort of like hunting and various things. So all the stalkers are going out hunting. Um, the bosses have kind of like organized everyone to work together to kind of do all the things they've been doing. Um, and uh, one spring evening, um, everything changes. 
Um, you're all doing your thing. Um, and someone lets out an almighty scream. And before you know it, things erupt around you. There's explosions, there's gunfire. Um, and you realize that you are being attacked by a large group of people from, from outside the zone. You've never seen them before. They've got big, thick, black vehicles. Um, on the vehicles, they've got scrap like guns that kind of like shoot, they seem to go through the sort of like sides of the buildings. Um, they come in, they're starting to hack at, the, at your brothers and sisters, um, which is forcing you to leave. Um, and they hound you and they hound you for days and you just run with whatever you can carry and the elder who seems to have got hurt during the course of this attack and you have to leave everything you've ever known um, and you just run for days. You don't know how long you run for, but you go through woodland, trees, swamp. You kind of go through sort of like small, broken down ruins. And again, they just keep hounding you and they pick you off and they pick you off. You probably think that you probably started in the, at the, at the arc at the maximum amount of time with maybe 200, 210 brothers and sisters. By the time you manage to get away from these people that hound you down, you're down to maybe 175 of you. Um, and so you've lost friends, people you're really close to. The elder's really sick. Um, half of the, um, the Chronicles of the Dawn Vault are gone. Um, they've only managed to capture or, or, or carry with them a couple of real sacred items. Um, and you've just managed to catch your breath and you've managed to stop. And you've managed to find the ruins of this old um, building that's kind of semicircular. Um, and underneath the sort of like semicircular structure, there's quite a lot of um, vaults and you've managed to hide underneath there. Um, it's given you enough time to sort of rest, recuperate. Um, you've kind of all put your sort of resources together that you have um, so that you can all as, a, as an arc kind of hold up, take stock. And a council is called. The elder, who is not doing well at all, um, has said that while he's rec recovering, and he'll be fine soon, um, he puts um, the bosses in charge of all of you and says, you all have to work together and you all need to figure out a new place to stay. It's going to be safe. And at that point, he lapses into um, a long sleep. Um, and he comes in and out of sleep every now and then, um, but he then eventually just drifts off. Um, he seems to be breathing. He seems to be doing everything else fine. They make him comfortable. And the bosses all kind of get together. They don't really know what to do. There's a little bit of fighting. Um, and they eventually um, need to um, get someone to go out and have a look. Um, they realize that the majority of the people they need to use, um, they need to stay behind to protect the rest of the arc. And so the bosses all decide to look at all three of you. And uh, you were all nominated very, very kindly um, to go out into the zone and see if you can find out what's going on out there. Um, you figure, or, or the bosses figure, they've probably got five or six days worth of food to kind of hunker down here with um, and say to you, you need to go out and find a suitable place for us to stay. Um, and then we're going to have to start building again. And so that is the preamble up to <laughs> where we are today. Um, right. So as you may guess, you don't have an arc anymore. Um, and you've already lost hundred or you've lost quite a few members of your own, um, of your arc. Um, the way that system would work is every session, um, you roll the dice and more people die, um, from starvation or from being injured or illness. Um, so there is a bit of a, an urgency to kind of find a place, set up camp, 
find a place that's going to be suitable and then start rebuilding. Once you start rebuilding, people will stop dying and stop disappearing off. And hopefully, by that point, you'll be able to rebuild and follow yeah. whatever dream that you may have. Um, so I'm going to reveal the zone. Here we go. Ta-da. Loading the zone. It's a black <laughs> square. <laughs> ah, where are we? So you should be there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So okay. when you said you said we were in like, like a semicircular um semicircular building. building that has like you said like vaults underneath it? Yes. So um there are vaults underneath the, the semicircular building. Um the top half of the building kind of rises maybe two stories in the semicircular building. Um but there's, it looks like a lot of people may have sat around in a semicircular way looking down at something. Um, and you're underneath uh, that. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Um, and is there, there's yes. no roof on this thing either, right? There's no roof on the actual thing. Obviously, you're underground, so you've got concrete above you um, and yep. rubble. Yep. And so you're quite well hidden for yep. the short amount of time, but it's very cramped. You all kind of get in that there isn't really a lot of space to kind of move or do anything. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yes, you've all been tasked to go out, explore, see if you can find somewhere suitable, or at the very least, find another place that you can go to and then maybe leapfrog that kind of way until you find somewhere that's suitable. Leapfrog. Um, yeah. Okay. Point of order for our characters with equipment. Um, yep. <laughs> for those of us who rolled a lot of food or water, um, every four units takes up a unit of encumbrance. So if you mm -hmm. want to leave anything behind, <clears throat> well, this, I guess what I wanted to ask is: Does anybody need food or water? Um, because I have I have a bit of extra food. And I don't um, necessarily want to leave it behind if someone else is, could use it. So I I think we need one a day, right? One, yeah. one ration of each? Yeah, correct. So that means that we should probably take it all if, if we are expecting to be gone for five, yeah. six days? And we could find more as well, of course. But yeah, you, can, you can get some more. Well, yeah. I, um, I, I had thought um, initially that I would, um, I, I luckily rolled six on both. So I, I thought I'd take, uh, I, I take half and stash half. But yeah, um, yeah I'm also very happy to, um, you know, d do as the group sees fit. Okay. Um, well, anything you stash will be with the rest of the arc and they will happily carry it with them <laughs> wherever you go. Um, and if at any point you wish to bequeath any of your food and water to them, then you can do so. Yeah, Probably it's probably worth first. taking it all with us, to be honest, and not storing anything. But just eat it. Eat everything. <laughs> yep. Okay. And it's just a bit of extra weight. Um, we're going to be using it. So one thing we'll all know from from growing up in the zone is that if you eat anything you find in the zone. Mm -hmm. You'll get sick. <laughs> uh, it needs to be kind of. Um, there's a way to. There's a way to prepare it so that it won't make you sick. Um, and the stuff that we've got is all clean. Yes, it's all been prepared, and it's either packaged in food that you've already had and made, or it's in these old tins or packets that you've managed to get hold of. Okay. So it's worth uh, in Foundry on your character sheets, probably just um, on the gear tab, making note of uh, like making sure that that's up to the whatever the number is that you take that you that you want to take with you. Yeah, I'm just having a look now. Okay. So um, yeah, I'll probably um, you know be, being nominated. I'm actually probably quite eager to get out and away from the group because we're probably probably there's a lot of stress going on right now. Um, and I'm kind of excited, in, in, even though this terrible thing has happened, I'm kind of excited to see 
where we are and whether maybe we can find something that will help. Um, obviously finding an arc, a suitable location for an arc would be the best thing. But I'll leave yeah. that up to, you know, that's for, that's for, um, sorry, is it Gia or Gia? Yeah. It's up to Gia to, to do that, really. <laughs> As our stalker, you know. Um, <laughs> I'll just, I'll just hoover up all the artifacts we come across. So I'm probably just kind of quietly going along. I've been chosen because of, you know, I don't know why. <laughs> well, clearly you're going to, you know, recognize all this stuff. I, I mean, I, I'm just, I just know how not to get killed out there, but you'll know what we're looking at well i yeah i guess maybe sure i mean yeah the reason they give you is silas <laughs> Sil Sil knows what's out there um gia can kind of like make sure everyone's uh safe going through it and she's pretty good at spotting stuff and then dara can basically <laughs> protect the other two <laughs> yeah also you're kind of expendable, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Always the way. All right. Um, yeah, so you kind of rest up for that evening. Um, and then first thing in the morning, you can kind of decide what you want to do. Um, if you're going to go out and you want to, this whole square that you're, this whole sort of like sector that you're in has not been explored. So you can explore the sector as well. Um, oh, right. Or alternatively, you can choose to go on to the next one. As a, as a stalker, when you're sort of like traveling across the zone, um, you can you can go through each of these squares, which is the, the bit I've highlighted, um, and that takes on average four hours, unless you've got a stalker with you, in which case um, you can go a bit quicker. Um, and it depends on whether or not you want to spend any time searching that area or you just want to run through it. Um, yeah. But then you miss anything like, you know, artifacts or food or, being able to understand what's going on or any kind of like places there that are of any interest. Um, the the buildings and everything that you're around, everything is rubble, everything is just horrible. It's, you know, it's not easy to kind of go through. There are no sort of like set roads and stuff that you, you might imagine. Buildings have kind of tumbled in on others um, over the years. Um, lots of vines and trees and various other bits has kind of like grown up through that so it's not what i would call very easy traveling okay geo where do you which direction do you, do you think we should be heading off maybe we should well, check this. you can't go north <laughs> <laughs> that's the direction we came from is it yeah okay well, so I, I guess we maybe want to explore our our, our uh, immediate surroundings first. Make sure that you know there's not a, a, a cave full of zone ghouls right next to the guys we're leaving behind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, that's fine. If you wish to um, explore the zone that you're in, you can do. Um, I mean, so we can... might find something we might find some sweet stuff that, that it would be nice to have with us. Yep, sure. Yep. Sounds good. Um, so, as a stalker, you have a talent called Find the Path. Oh, sorry, I skill, not talent. in my immediate right. future. A skill, <laughs> yes. You see a role in your immediate future. Um, and so that allows you to kind of wander through the zone and kind of explore it. Um, and it doesn't take you ages to do so. You've got a knack for kind of going through um, all the rubble, this post-apocalyptic world. You know what to generally what to miss, you know, not to kind of like stand on specific types of rubble in case you fall through. And so that just means that you can kind of make your way around and you have a keen eye around that sort of thing. Um, so that usually takes you a couple of hours to kind of explore a sector. You kind of go out, and, and depending on how you do it, how you decide you want to do it, either methodically, or you just kind of naturally kind of have a a, a knack to doing it. Um, but if you'd like to uh, make a um, find the path roll, yes, please. Um, you can explore the wall. So this is just a single click by clicking on yeah. find the path. Yeah, but what it will I actually roll it. are five agility dice and three skill dice which is these five yellow and three green and in this like most your zero engine games um you just need sixes to succeed and you got 
one. Now, you can push these rolls too. So if you push the roll, you can effectively um, re-roll. You put any ones, any sixes, and uh, any any dice with symbols, basically. So not the green ones, but if there was, if you'd roll a one on one of the yellow dice, that would have to be set aside as well. Um, and you would re-roll them all, and you could potentially get more sixes for stunts in this game. They're called, um, which might, because which could be worth doing. We'll find extra stuff. Dice, the skill dice can't do anything bad to me, right? No, um, they're... they're already showing ones. You've got two that rolled ones. Fine. Um, so if you roll a one on a on a base dice on a base die, which is um, one from your attributes, it will damage that attribute, like it does in Forbidden Lands, and mm -hmm. um, at the same time you'll get a mutation point, which will help you to fuel your uh, your mutations if you want to use them. So you kind of have to push in this game to get the mutation points. So it's kind of this this is kind of this this balance that you've got to you got to find. So uh, that reminds me, you will have a mutation point if you haven't really. Oh, we start with one, don't we? We start yeah. with one, and every session you get another one. Mm -hmm. So um, the question is, do you want to push? Do you want to push the roll? I was going to say, I, I totally should push this, shouldn't yeah. I? Um, and if you look on your character sheet in Foundry, you see next, like at the top, it says push, kind of at the top right. So just click that, and it will. And it does. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> And it's you can see it's automatically reduced your agility down by one, so that's what it doesn't found. Gorgeous. And it has it given you an extra mutation point. Um, it should do. So you want to add that add that to two? I think it's added one in because you didn't start with yes. any. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you should make that two. Do you see where that is on the attributes tab? I've got it. Okay. Oh, nice. Oh, but that effect is really sweet. All right. <laughs> Okay, brilliant. Um, so you got um, two successes. Nice. Um, so you you have a you have a wander around um, the sector. You're all kind of like following Gia. She's kind of like showing you where um, you need to walk. Oh, don't step there. Step there. That kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, you, you you kind of have a, a, a bit of a a bit of a look around. The majority of the buildings. Are, or, or were at some point probably six to seven stories tall. Um, they've all kind of fallen in themselves. Some of them were made of the uh, of sort of like good old fashioned old world concrete. Um, some of them were made of different other materials, which you don't really know what they're for, but some of them are shiny. Um, and you kind of have a look around. There isn't a huge amount here. Um, so most are you of saying that there's these, there are these buildings, so there are like yeah. a lot of them, like we're in an urban There is a lot area. of them. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so, so there are a lot of them. They've all kind of fallen in. Um, they were sort of like six or seven stories tall. Um, okay. And every now and then there's a different kind of, um, in fact, uh, if you've got um, the skill, uh, know the zone. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can make that roll, and I can give you a little bit more information. That's for everyone. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I may as well roll as well. Why not? Ooh. Wow. There's <laughs> dice everywhere. Look at you lot. What successes. Fire. Lots of successes. Successes and everywhere. Success. It's a it's a good way to start the uh, start the game. Um, so yes, so you 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 have come across this kind of sort of design that the the people from 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 the old days used to do. You used to have a lot of um, buildings that housed where people lived, and then in squares around them, you would have other buildings where they went to go and eat or they'd go and buy things. Apparently, in, in the time before, there were places. That was just open that you could go into and just get anything you wanted. Um, hmm. And you've learned that this is this would this used to be probably a good a good place to get food and supplies way back when obviously this this thing had happened. But now it's all kind of disappeared and picked clean. Occasionally you might find something, um, and so you kind of make your way through those kind of buildings, um, hoping that you're going to find a can of food here or 
maybe something else. Um, and you do that. So you, you kind of figure this is where people lived um, and people also went to get the stuff they needed to, for their places where they lived in. Um, and you do know that as you get closer into sort of like the center of these large zones, the buildings changed to not necessarily where people lived. Um, so yes, yeah, so you kind of look around all these places um, and you can kind of see that there's not a lot of what you would what you were hoping to find. You were hoping you're going to find something very quickly. Um, but actually, there, there isn't a huge amount. Um, what you do find, though, is um, one of these large places where things were stored, um, you find that there's actually a lot of rubble on some stairs which are leading down underneath one of these places, um, which may or may not still hold things for you. Um, this is the same zone as our... It's the same zone you're in. Yeah, all the people are in. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, you've kind of you've kind of like found this this building that is where people used to go and get their stuff, and there's this set of stairs which have all kind of blocked in. You probably require a bit of time to dig it out, and you could probably go down there and see if there was anything there. Um, other than that, it is a pretty much a desolate zone in so much as that it's just rubble. There's nothing of any kind of use that you can find or, 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 or see. Well, should we just circle back home and, and, and tell the other guys that they might, you know, want to explore here to show them the safe way to get there? And then, you know, maybe... I, I really don't hope it's going to be that hard, but if we don't find anywhere nice, really close, then they'll not starve in a week's time? Maybe? Yeah, I mean, you can do that, but um, they'd be able to sort of like go over there and it's not very, it's not a million miles away from, from where they are holed up and they could potentially just get a group of them and go and do something like that. So you found it, you can go back, tell them and they can do that. Okay. I mean, they're, they're, there's a bunch of them, you know, that, like how, how do you feed 170 people? They'll, they'll go through a ton of grub in a week. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. You can do that. And so um, we won't get into the, the minutiae of the, the, of the small game, but that would be what they call a zone expedition where people go out and do that, which is what they can do. And it's in the zone they're in at the moment. So I have no problem with while you guys are going off doing whatever you want to do, they can get on and do that. Um, so we'll say that takes a full four hours of your time searching, finding, going back to, the, to them saying, this is what we found. You could probably go and get stuff from there, go dig it out and see what you can find. That's cool. Well, um, it might not take four hours. Well, because it's two hours to find it. Go back. And oh, then... Gia, Gia, so yeah, Gia rolled two successes, so she can oh, so yeah, spend can one of the successes to um, to make things take half the time. Yeah, so it's a couple of hours. So yeah, that's, that's if, cool. If you want to, or, hold on. So this is so yes, this, 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 this like you're you're like kind of sorry. making a narrative for us before um, like Gia gets to like Chris gets to choose <laughs> a stunt, right? That is true. Um, so I've just I've opened the PDF on the cool. on the recording here. Um, you could also make this uh, be the rot freest way to go, which I think is not quite as much of a concern quite yet. Not yet, no. <laughs> Do you have access to the whole list of um, things, Chris? It's on um, page fifty-six of the PDF. And I think you can get it in Foundry if you. No, I got it. I got it open. Some the skills, um, yeah. Yeah. So basically, the first success, if you roll a success when you're um, doing find the path, it allows you to find a safe path through the zone, and if there are any threats there, we'll spot them before they spot us. Um, and any extra six you roll, you get to you get to choose a stunt, and you roll two, so you get to pick one of them. Hmm. Well, so we were we we're fairly fairly good for um for rations. I mean, we we have everything that we need that we 
Um, you know, that uh, we wouldn't need to find anything to set out now. Um, so, Ration yeah, wise, I guess... Grub, grub wise, I think we're... Grub wise? We've got a lot. Um, yeah, I, I think I think doing this quickly is um, a good role play too, because we're all eager to get out there, I think. Okay. Um, okay, so you're going to use your extra talent to, or your extra sort of stunt, sorry, um, to. Sorry, I was trying to find it. It says second from the bottom. It says the ex the yeah. exploration of the sector only takes half the time. Yeah. So, you, so it takes you um, half the time, so that's fine. Um, so you go back if, if that's what you're going to do. Um, tell them about it, and then you've got the rest of the day still to to explore further zones. So I guess the question is, which which direction are we heading in? Yeah. Um, this will teach me how to use this tool. <laughs> yeah. what, what's the orange line around us, actually? That's just the token. Just the token. Okay. Just so it's um, selected. Well, um, any any preferences? This all looks uh, exciting enough to me. Uh, I don't have a preference. Came from you, say? So maybe head south? South, yeah. South. We were heading south before, just keep heading south. Keep going south. So, um, here, um, as you're about to go into a new sector, could you please make your uh, um, explore the zone or find the path or whatever it's called? <laughs> find the path. Okay, <laughs> find the path. So I guess we're one die down from the last one. You are because you took a bit of damage to your uh, to your agility. Well, <laughs> mm, look at that. Did you want to push that? Or are you happy with that? <laughs> now I am starting to uh, starting to wonder. Um, what do you say, guys? Oh. Um, no, it's it's probably too soon to risk yeah, that, I like on the you know, sort of before lunchtime, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. What time of day is it actually? If it's um, so it's probably late morning, early afternoon. Okay. So I, I, I tell... would be hurting. I would be hurting my agility, which I recover by drinking, right? So when you rest, as long as you've had a drink, you'll recover your agility. So at this point, like, un unless something really bad happened to us that would make us lose our provisions, I'm like, oh, I can, I can think <laughs> this out. Um, you know, not a problem. I, I could totally push that. Yes, no. You can do. Remember, oh, you I'm can always, you can, you can always push it, and then you do it so much that you end up hurting yourself <laughs> too much, and you, you get knocked out. Ah. Look at you taking the... Oh, oh nice. Stunts. Yes, I want stunts. <laughs> cool. Okay. Excellent. Oh, and you do that, the, uh, the extra mutation point automatically. That's awesome. So that's handy. Um, I like that. <laughs> Less of the uh, <laughs> of, of the rolling then. Okay. Um, so, uh, what do you want to do with your extra stunt? I would like to find an artifact. Oh, that's if there's an artifact in your... Uh, in the zone, shall we? Yes, please. Let's have a little look. Here's a zone I prepared <laughs> earlier. Um, <laughs> That's what I just came from, after all. Uh, let's have a look. So, um, as you make your way into the zone, um, the thing you realize is that there's a lot of woods. Um, and as you're kind of getting into the, into, into, into the actual area of, of the, that you're walking through, um, the woods are slowly sort of like losing their leaves and they're dying, which is, it's spring. So you'd think that oh. the trees would be getting better, but they seem to have like kind of gone through winter and have died. Um, and as you're getting closer into the zone, um, you're realizing that something has made the trees sick. Um, and the grass is starting to go sort of like brown and sickly. Um, 
And as you're kind of getting closer and closer, um, yeah, you're realizing there's something that's not quite right <laughs> with this with, with this with this bit, bit of area. Um, I feel like I might have wanted to choose Rock Finder for my stunt, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you start looking around and you kind of like, oh, let's have a look around here. Um, and as you're kind of like spending a bit of time having a bit of a, a of an explore, um, you come across um, in the trees a group of graves. Oh. Um, and there's um, pieces of scrap that have kind of like been put into the sort of like the head of the graves. You would assume it's the head, not the foot. Um, and on each one of them, uh, there's uh, like a, an old rusted kind of helmet. Um, got holes in and like some of it's rusting and, and, and ripped away. There's a couple of like sort of, one of them's got what's left of sort of a little tattered piece of chin strap or something. And it's on each one of these, these graves and there are five of them. Is there anything um, of plunder? Uh, you look around, other than the bits of scrap, there isn't anything really of any kind of value. Um, the, the graves are kind of like stuck with sort of large sort of like boulders and stones and bits of rubble, and they're sort of effectively coffin-sized. Um, but that is pretty much the only thing of any note that you kind of note as you wander around these sort of like really dead kind of sick roots. Is is it, is it conjecture to assume that the graveyard is sort of in the middle um, of, of where that unhealthiness is spreading from? No, it's not in the middle. It's sort of like off center. Okay, so it's, it doesn't seem to be obviously emanating from there. Okay. No. No. I wasn't sure if I caught that. Right. I'll throw yeah. a look over to, to Silas and if you want me to lift the rocks, just say so. Oh, if you get sick, I don't want to be carrying you around. I don't think we should be touching that very much. Yes, yeah, it doesn't look... Looks like there's a lot of rot here, maybe. It's no kind of rot I've ever seen before, though. I think we should... Let's just... Let's just keep looking. This not a good site for an arc. Yeah, and no, it doesn't it, look like there's going to be anything I want to eat in here. There isn't much in the way of buildings either. It's pretty much just woodland, yeah. dead woodland. Um, it's kind of just, just not very nice. It's just, yeah, a dead area. It might have been maybe a park in, in, in back in the old days that's kind of like just got out of control and then it's just died of whatever it's died of. I imagine we've we buried brothers and sisters before. You have. Does this feel hasty in its like with with, with a reverence? Yes. Or, yeah. 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 It is. It is. It is hasty. It's not sort of um, well constructed or put together. And it, but but they obviously meant something to someone. Yeah, especially with them placing. Uh, helmets, you said rusted helmets. Yeah, on top. so they're rusted kind of helmets um, from the time before on top of the five graves, like, like on top of the actual scrap yes. sticking out of it. Um, every now and then, there's a sort of like creaking of the rusted helmet on the scrap as the wind kind of whips around. Yeah, I don't, I don't like this. This is not a good yeah. place. Nope, um, and as you say that, um, you realise it's sort of like a, a very light, pale, sickly, yellowy fog has kind of like started to kind of accumulate. It's sort of like the dips and, and hollows of, of, around the trees and stuff. Um, and it's just kind of clinging to sort of like the odd roots on the floor and and just sort of like your boots and stuff like that. It kind of looks just, and it's kind of like a bit of a, you know, that kind of chill that kind of goes through the back of your, back of your neck um, as the sun sort of like is, dying away just like just everything's kind of very dark and being sort of like depressed onto you you're like oh okay <laughs> that's not what i kind of wanted to hear 
or see or smell. It's there's a weird kind of faintly pustulous <clears throat> kind of smell to everything. What kind of smell? Sorry. Like, like, like the smell of pus. So you know you've had a couple of sisters mm. who've or brothers who've kind of like had a bit of a slight infection. It's got a slight, slight smell of that. It's not particularly nice. I'm looking. I'm looking between uh, Gia and Silas, waiting for one of them to to decide what to do. Like a like like an anxious dog. Yeah, like I'm just gonna start once the fog starts kind of rolling in and that smell is noticeable. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start kind of like grab Gia if if Gia's not doing anything and be like, get to, let's, as well, let's get like, out of here. Let's go. Let's go. Um, which way do you want to go? Mechanical question. Sure. The stunt that G rolled. Yes. How do you handle it with? Because um, there's the this, mm. this comes up in lots of games. If you ask for an artifact and there are no artifacts, um, I'll, I'll let her allow to to, to, to do. Yeah, we'll, so we'll just if you haven't of... got an artifact. Well, it's weird because you're actually trying to take the time to sort of like look for the artifact. Well, if there is, isn't one, if there is one, you'll find it. If there's none, you can't yeah yeah i mean this this comes up often in meet your zero games is is that is that a wasted option (laughs) or do Um, you get it yeah i guess i guess what you're doing is you're 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 deciding to spend the full amount of time looking for something and if it's not there it's not there you've just spent the time looking for something i guess that's the option I mean, we've got the fog rolled in, you know, like, pe- people <clears throat> hide nice things in well, graves. My, my take is you spend four hours looking through a zone, and yep. you can basically, with the stunts, you can decide what you find in it. So there is an artifact, if if there's one there, mm-hmm. that you find. Yeah, if there is one there, you'd find it. Yeah. If there isn't, then okay. you don't, or I guess we can, we can, we can, we can house rule this now. Um, or... Yeah, I th- this is. Uh, I think. I think there's a, a correct answer on this necessarily. No, because it's, it's, it's always the way. It's the whole kind of. Well, you never know 100 which way it'll be. Yeah. Um, so the way, yeah, the way I would I, I would read it is for the extra stunt, you can find an artifact in the sector. Uh, if you didn't have that stunt, then you would just no. explore it. The, the question. Um, the, the yeah. The, the question is, yeah. if you decide that you want to find an artifact, if there is one there, and yeah. there is no artifact in the zone, do you? lose the stunts you, or yeah yeah because the way i see it you're actually spending the full amount yeah. of time kicking over rocks going into buildings and doing all that um and if and, and if there is one you find it if there isn't you don't you know? um so it's just one of those things that you 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 do you, you use that stunt up and then it's done in the same way that if you you know um found you know you look to the bullets or you assess the general level that's, of the that's, rot. That's my that, argument. <laughs> yeah. Is that you're looking, you're searching a zone for four hours. Yeah. You're not necessarily looking for anything specific. Yeah. And the stunts are the only way you can find anything in a zone. Yeah. Mm. So in the same way, yeah. if you've pre-rolled a zone and there are no bullets in it, and you yeah. say, I want to spend my stunt to find bullets, then that's also a wasted stunt. But it's not it's not a case of you're only looking for bullets while you're searching his own yeah. for four hours. You're looking for anything you can find. I think that makes sense. No, the, the the real world person in me, um, if you're out doing bushcraft and you wander around looking for specific food, <laughs> um, and there isn't anything there that you can eat or there is nothing there that you could use, you would have just wasted that time. Um, but if even though technically you're in a a location that would probably have it, um, yeah, okay. I, I see. Yeah, I mean, I, I get that. I mean, or or do you just decide you spent the four hours looking? Your extra stunt would be to automatically find the artifact. Or <laughs> if you don't have the artifact, can you then spend it on something else? Okay. My, so Real the way the way I've always bracket, the way yeah. I've always I've always run this is that you have if you have a stunt, you basically can pick what you get for mm. it and yeah if you pick an option that isn't in that zone then you pick a different mm-hmm. option so it's kind of like you find something with the stunt or you can take less time so it's kind of like yeah. you, you get something there's a there's a stunt there's something cool happening and yeah. therefore it's never kind of wasted but um i'm yeah. happy i think 
you make, no, I, you're the GM, I, you make I, the decision. No, no, and we'll, you know what? I, 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 I would like to hear in the that. comments think, for this video. <laughs> yes, they were like, what, what? We're on that Not, side. This is unfortunately um, going to be broadcast like weeks after we've after that, we've that, recorded. That's fine. I, I think <laughs> I'm actually quite happy with, um, If normally I'm quite harsh when it comes to that sort of stuff and go, well, tough like you've lost it, too bad. But I, I, I quite like that. I've never thought about it in that in that way. And I, I like that. So if there is no artifact, you don't need to worry about spending that stunt because there isn't one. You can spend that stunt on something else instead. And we'll use that for the rest of the, the game. Yeah, I like that. Plus, it's more cinematic and, and, and more fun. Yeah, I, I love that that reasoning too, because I mean, the, the rules as written are quite clear. If you know, you find it, if it is there to be found. Well, that's that's just saying because there's like you said, you know, like you, you, you roll the zones randomly, and yeah. there it it decides like whether there is an artifact, how many artifacts are in each zone, I, if any, yeah. and that's just that's all that says is if it's there to be found. So it's not saying you can spend a stunt to find an artifact. Yep. It's saying if there's an artifact there, you you can spend a stunt to find it. But it's not saying it, that's all it's kind of saying. It's kind of the rest is a bit ambiguous. Um, I'm going to get my GM hat on here uh, and say, um, actually, because of the nature of the, the game we're playing on the stream, I think that if this is my own home, t my home group, I'm going to make a different, different, d different decision. But for the for the sake of the story and to keep everything going and all the narrative going, I, I really like Matt's way of doing things. So I think absolutely, um, uh, Chris, if you want to pick a different stunt that will give you something else you can do because there is no artifact right um but i th i think narratively uh, <laughs> it might make sense to, for us to spend the quick the quick one again right because we're not gonna yeah, we're not really gonna spend four hours looking through a zone if this fog is coming in and we're trying to rush out of it i think um uh, well I, I was gonna say that narratively if we spend that time looking to find only that what we were looking for wasn't there like if we'd been looking for berries but we found bullets instead we wouldn't leave mm. them um but uh, uh meta gaming <laughs> i'm very inclined to actually do the rot thing sure i like that uh -huh. because i'm i'm i, I want to see how that one works and i'm worried with that we're going to get hurt um in a uh, in a second <laughs> okay um so um you spend your extra stunt uh to assess the general level of rot there is indeed a level of rot in this area um and now that the um the the mist has come in um indeed there is actually a weak rot if you spend um any longer in here um through the rest of the day you will all start to suffer um a sickness Uh, so for for in-game purposes, you'll start to suffer one rock point that you spend in this sector. And that's that's um we we crot is one in one an hour? Uh so one no, per day. Oh one per day, okay. Um that's not too bad then. Sorry, so the fog we think the fog is kind of is kind of causing this as well? Uh, right? potentially, yes. Okay. It seems to be seeping out of things and, and just kind yeah. of like, it's just low level. It's only about ankle height. Oh, right. Okay. So yeah. It's not like all over, it's just ankle height. It's kind of like, you, you, you reckon as the day's going on and it's starting to get a bit colder and the sun's gone in, the fog is starting to kind of okay. lift. You're not really sure where it is. None of you are meteorologists. You don't really know how the weather system works. So it's just, it just seems to have appeared around your feet. And it seems to be sort of like snaking its tendrils around the bases of all the trees. Which now you realise it probably makes sense as to why the trees are sick. Let's get let's let's get away from this yeah. fog. This is so creepy. Um, yeah. So, uh, Gia, which direction would you like to go? Continuing south, east, or west, or back north? Uh, I, I'd um, I'd like to change direction now. Um, I'm totally for going east. Oh, my brain just went. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, which is great. So let me. Uh, is it? I like this. <laughs> which is great. Dun, dun, dun. Did that work this time? Yeah, mm. that worked. Oh, yes. Um. So you make your way 
east, it appears, into the next zone. <gasps> Luckily, I've had one prepared for <laughs> such an eventuality. Um, I think by this point, um, Gia, you know what to do. <laughs> I think I do. Um, but you might see that your agility is slowly going down. <laughs> Rolling really well. We're very lucky, though. Uh, and yes, no, just... no, no reason to push this time. <laughs> sure you don't want to push? It's up to you. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so you make your way into um, the next, the next one. Um, again, as you kind of like make your way through um, the trees and stuff sort of slowly start to clear out um and as you leave the sort of like horrible fog behind um the the, the landscape seems to raise a little um and as you're making your way up the sort of like hill um as you're getting towards the top of it you can see there's a building on top of this mound um and it's this sort of like dirty red brick and it probably was beige colored kind of building um, there's this winding snaking sort of old road which kind of makes its way up there um, there is and it's surrounded by this knotty viney kind of shrubbery um, that probably was at some point quite pretty but it's all kind of got out of hand um, and you can see a bunch of old run down rusted vehicles that were there at some point um there's a large sort of placard that's that's sort of like at the bottom of this hill um which had at some point some writing on um but it's all kind of all the paint and stuff is peeled off and flecked off um and as you kind of like look up um you hear a bell chime from the building um and it's this, this long thick dark is probably the best way it's a very foreboding kind of clong noise um as you look up towards this building i think that seems like a good place to end the session mm. wow creepy bells all right cool so thanks very much ed thank and, you and um cool. yep would love to hear your comments if um you have anything you want to you want to comment on? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm quite actually curious about the about the artifact thing because this comes up usually. I think this has come up in every single game of Mutant Zero I've ever run, always in the first session. Let um, it go, Matt. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kind of curious about how um, like how other people how the people kind of view view it because you can kind of take it mm. definitely take it two ways. Um, but yeah, we're gonna stop it there. So um, we'll you'll see us again in two weeks time. And thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone for uh, for playing. <laughs>